This is Ken Hance, best storyteller in Texas. Uh, saying of the day is you can't quote silence. Uh, and that's uh, State Representative Bill Heatley, uh, who is deceased, but he was chairman of appropriations for many years. And he always said that. And also, he said, uh, uh, you can't uh, uh, read back a phone call. Uh, you can, unless they illegally uh, tap you, but you can read a letter back. He was always saying, be, be careful what you put in the letter. They'll read it back to you someday, about 10 years later. And uh, he, he would call. Everybody that wrote him, he'd just call them. If it's bad, he, he just wouldn't call them at all. You know, he, he, that he'd have a staff member call him and say something. So uh, that was his rule of thumb, and it, and it worked forever. He, uh, he, he had a lot of people he represented and did a good job for his district. He knew more about the appropriation bill. While everybody was out partying at night, he was studying the appropriation bill, reading it. He he really thought that was good, that uh, he, he enjoyed uh, reading the appropriation bill, knew a lot about it. Um, new words. The uh, dictionary.com came out with 566 new words. I mean, yeah, I just go, good gracious. Now, I wrote some of them down, and they had coffee now. Now, that, that just is a conflict in its saying. It's coffee nap that if you drink a cup of coffee and take about a 15, 20-minute nap, uh, you when you wake up, you're really ready to go. My problem is if I drink a cup of coffee, I don't want to take a 15-minute nap. I'd never heard of that. Shower orange. And that, this one's kind of goofy. It was that that's for somebody that peels a shower, uh, peels an orange in the shower and and uh, that that would be an odd person uh i would i would think blurs day blurs day is when you're really busy and everything is in a blur and it's kind of like groundhog day all over again and nepo baby a nepo baby is somebody that's famous and their parents were famous uh, usually somebody in the uh, uh, movies one of the new sayings uh, decision fatigue and that that happens to people and a lot of people in college that uh, they'll have things come up and that they'll have decision fatigue they'll have to make so many decisions they they get tired of having to make a decision so it's cuts cuts down on their uh, their ability to quickly decide and decide the right way in talking about new words there is uh, the the master of new words throughout the centuries has been William Shakespeare. And uh, he had 1,700 new words, over 1,700, or phrases. And and I look at some of them, he's got too much of a good thing. How many times you hear that, you know, on a regular basis? And that was something from Shakespeare. It's Greek to me. Now, I like that one. It's Greek to me. You know, I don't know what it means, uh, that it is Greek to me. Neither rhyme nor reason. That's that's a great phrase, and it can be utilized a lot. And haven't slept a wink. We use that all the time. And unfortunately, that's true lots of times. Uh, my high school English teacher, S.T. Newman, he, always, he said, if 50 years from now, you just remember one thing that Shakespeare said, I feel like that I've done something good. And so when I call my children, my law partners, or my grandchildren, I'll say, where art thou, Brutus? And that way I can find out if they're in Lubbock or Fort Worth or, or wherever they might be. You know, one of them one time said, why do you say that? And I, I gave them the explanation. They went, okay. You know, I was about halfway through the explanation. They went, okay, you know, let, let me go. Let me go. You don't need to tell me the whole story. That, that goes back to Uncle Clarence's saying in Dimmit for Hans used cars. If you sell them the car, give them the keys. And uh, he had a couple one time that, he was selling a car, too, and he got to tell him about how good the car was. And uh, and then he, and this was in the 70s, 60s, 70s, he said, it's got electric windows. You can roll those windows, just touch a button, and the windows go up. And the woman said, oh, no, what, we can't do that because one of the kids will choke one of the other kids to death. And so he, he had kept talking, and they didn't buy the car. They left. And said after that, every time somebody said, well, I'll take the car— Boy, he gave him the keys and got him to sign a contract and figured out how they were going to pay for it. And uh, he learned the hard way. One other saying that uh, 
I use from time to time. Somebody will ask me why about some subject, and I'll, I'll say, I don't know. Why did Hitler invade Poland? He just did. You know, I mean, that's an answer. I don't know why that happened, but it just did. Not everything has to have an answer. Also, there is a new product by Gatorade, and it's going to be called Gatorade Water. And, uh, you know, I mean, but that's kind of unusual. Uh, Gatorade Water. It's supposed to be treated with certain minerals and certain vitamins. You know, it's like smart water. That uh, smart water helps stimulate you and makes you smarter. I've I've never really considered that, but uh, I think just getting water at the regular water hydrant uh, is is always suffice for me. But Gatorade is going to put a lot of money into Gatorade water, so mark my word, it's going to be a success. They've tested it. By the end of the year, you'll be seeing Gatorade water for sale. When I was a kid growing up, and I think most of the listeners that listen, they're older. If somebody had said, you'll buy water in a bottle, people, you know, they'll want to do a, a – they'll sell you water, and you'll pay for water. And and I don't think anyone would have believed that. And uh, now we always uh, buying a bottle of water someplace, somehow. We had the shortages. Remember the toilet paper? And we had all that problem shortages and everything. They've come up with a new one. I read an article on this, and it's on laxatives. People are, they use laxatives more because of anxiety and stress. And I hate to even say this, but they, they say part of the people, you know, people are always on the run. I don't know if that's a proper term that you should be using under those conditions, but uh, that that's that's a shortage. You know, if people not eating enough fiber, you should be able to get your fiber from fruits and and vegetables. But uh, it referred to an article from Mayo Clinic about bowel movements. I'm thinking, how did I get to this subject? But uh, anyway, it said. Uh, Three times a day or three times a week, either one's okay. And but uh, there's a real, real shortage coming up on laxatives. So be beware if if you uh, use those or anything. You need to hog up, I guess, and uh, and see uh, see that you're well taken care of. Story from Great Britain. There had been a there was a mass murder called in. Somebody said there had been fifteen twenty people murdered and where the bodies were. And the police, you know, and ambulances and everybody, they ran to the scene, and it was a yoga class. They were stretched out like a corpse, and somebody came by and looked in and saw that and saw there was one person moving around, and they had some kind of pencil or something, and they thought they had a gun. So they called in the police, and everybody showed up at 15, 20 dead, and hell, nobody was hurt. They were in a yoga class. In Ohio this week, at a Ace Hardware, guy was looking around. He was on parole, and he had an ankle bracelet, had a monitor, so they'd know where he was at all times. Found one of the employees, one of the clerks, and asked him where the hedge clippers were. And they showed him, and, and so he was looking at them, and they left. And what he did, he got the hedge clippers and cut his ankle monitor off. And they did not have a video of him cutting the monitor um, off, but they had a video of him placing the monitor on the shelf, and they they followed him with the video, and that he stopped, and got some popcorn on the way out, and rode off. And now they 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 got a warrant out for his arrest. What was he thinking? You know, I mean, they're going to get you sooner or later. Saw a story on you you're talking about somebody that's honest, a daughter bought a Powerball ticket for her dad, and and she hadn't given it to him. She still had it. She bought five for him and five for her, and one of his was $100,000, and she gave it to him. You know, most people would be tempted to say, oh, that was one of mine. Golly, you didn't you didn't have very good luck, but uh, she did the right thing. You know, it, can you do the right thing when no one's watching? Well, she complied with that, and I, I was impressed. There was a study done by a university, and, I, and it wasn't any of my schools. It wasn't Texas Tech or UT Law School. study was done on why cats like tuna. They really love tuna. 
And the result, and they spent a lot of money, uh, spent over a million dollars. And uh, the the result was that uh, the cats uh, like the smell of tuna. You know, I don't. I'm I'm sure that's bound to be helpful some way. Uh, when I was in Congress, there was a, a study that had been done on the sex life of the testy fly, and and we caught hell over it. And uh, it was it wasn't very expensive, but what it did, it kept them. They they did a study on it to keep keep them from multiplying, keep them from breeding. And uh, the result of that was that it improved the timber industry in the southeast in Georgia and places like that. So you never know what the study or what the research might be doing. Uh, July, this summer, July and August, hot. I mean, it was hot everywhere. A lot of people thought it's global warming. You know, 1980 was hotter. We had higher temperatures in 1980. What happened, uh, high pressure gets stalled over the south or southwest, and there's just no movement of air gets in, and it uh, gets very hot and stays very hot. I, I was in Houston two weeks ago, and it was 109. It was a record that day. It was 109, and they still had pretty good humidity. 109 in Houston is a lot worse than 109 in Lubbock. September's a good month if you're looking for a job the best month if you're looking for a job is january the second best is september and that's because some companies their fiscal budget runs from september one just like it does for universities and state budget uh september one till the end of august and so it's a it's a good time to be applying for a job but january because so many business run january one to december 31 january is a good time But the summer is a hard time to be looking for a job. People are on vacation. Somebody be out and they don't want to hire somebody. Well, while uh, uh, some of the people that would be interviewing the person are out uh, on uh, business or vacation. The uh, movie review service that's done by a company called Rotten Tomatoes. You know, they've been around since 99 and three students at Cal Berkeley they were going to class some and going to the movies more to start to decide to they'd rate movies. And it's been very successful, but they found that the people that were producing certain movies were trying to do a method that would make their movies look great. And there's always someone going to try to con any rating system. You know, that, that, I mean, that's just part of life. These people had gotten a rating of 47 first week, and then all of a sudden, the second, third, fourth week, it went up to 100%. So all, all of a sudden, it was, it was a great movie, and someone was just manipulating it. And so Rotten Tomatoes, they're, they're putting up precautions to try to make sure that that doesn't happen. I guess if you're going to go to a movie, go to Rotten Tomatoes and look up the movie and see what the general public. And most of the people that they have, they're just riding in, and uh, they're not professionals. And so sometimes professionals will give you a pretty good view, but amateurs will give you an excellent view, in my opinion. Another study that I wanted to mention had to do with loneliness and it increased the, the problems with suicide and depression and bad health. And uh, that's the reason that no matter who you are or where you're going, you, you need to have a group, whether it's your group at church or it's a group that you have breakfast with on a certain occasion. Um, I, I know there's some friends I know here in Lubbock that get together on Saturday morning, have breakfast. And if you want an opinion, it just go to that and, and you'll get a lot of opinion. And uh, I tried that, uh, you know, when I was chancellor a couple of times and, and uh, everybody knew how to run the university. And that uh, I tried it when I was in Congress, and you just get a lot of uh, free advice. And some of it's sometimes good. People are always saying, well, a lot gets done in a cocktail hour. Well, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think a lot gets done at a breakfast. Um, I, I think of one breakfast in particular. I had breakfast with uh, J. Fred Busey, who was originally from Tahoka, and I've told stories about him before. He was president of Texas Instruments and a brilliant guy, and I had breakfast with him. One morning when I was uh, carrying Ronald Reagan's tax cut, 
1981. And he said, the most important thing you can do, this is what J. Fred Busey said, the most important thing you can do is get an incremental investment tax credit in the bill that will be for research and development, that will give an incentive for businesses to spend money and time on research and development. He was talking about it, and I said, well, I'll talk to uh, Don Regan, who was Secretary of Treasury. And he said, you know, nobody had a cell phone. He said, look, let me give you a dime. You go call him right now. I'll wait right here. And I could tell that Fred wasn't joking, and he expected me to call him right then. And so I went over and called and talked to one of his assistants and told him I wanted to talk to him about it later in the day. And uh, when I talked to Don Regan, who he was an unusual guy. He thought that everybody in the world was a private and that he was a four-star general. you know. But he did agree that that, that that would be a great incentive for research and development. And that's how we wound up with that. And ever president, when somebody's looked at doing away with it at one time, Obama looked at doing away, it, it withstood the test of time and it's still being utilized uh, by uh, companies in their research and development. Very important, very important. And that was done at breakfast. I always look at breakfast meetings, look around, see what's going on, see who's having breakfast with who. At the Austin Club in, in uh, Austin, there I'll look to see you know, if there's some lobbyist having breakfast with a member of the House or Senate or something, and I wonder, what are they working on? You know, uh, what what's going to be coming out of that break? Well, I hope you enjoyed today's stories, and I hope you'll like and subscribe to the podcast, and also email your friends and text your friends and tell them to join. <laughs>